Hello and welcome to another video. Um, there's a thousand of these types of videos out there, but my wife has pointed out that we still get asked this question and we're looking at games to, to start to get into the hobby. And yeah, we've been asked a lot, so I have to give her, give her that. But there's a lot of these videos, so ours might be a little bit different than other people give it. So I tried to make it a little bit more... Yeah, I, we chose some that are a little bit more off the beaten path, so... We've got some of the, the classics, but we've also got some different ones. You want to start? You can start. All right. I like card drafting. I like it a lot. There's some really good ones, including uh, Fairy Tale. Uh, Seven Wonders is great, but they tend to be pretty complicated. Uh, as time goes on, you got to look at interactions. Sushi Go, and this is one of our ones. You know, we happen to have it in a tin. There was a, a set that was in a tin, and all of our tins have been transitioned to, to those uh, picture holders. But it's a drafting game, so you're going to get a hand of cards. You're going to pick one. You're going to pass the hand to the next person. And it rotates around till you have two cards left. You discard those two cards. You score. You move on. Great little game. Quick. Easy. Uh, we've had, we've told everybody that. And it's gone pretty well. So great starter for card drafting. It also doesn't take a lot of room. So it's, no. it's easy to, to bring out anywhere. If you want someone to start deck building, this is Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. And for an IP game, this is an excellent one. They did a really good job. And the thing is, is like the books, this is done in levels. So if you play book one, it is ridiculously easy game. Just like book one is a really easy book to read. Um, they actually recommend if you've played a number of games to start with books one through three. But this would be a great game for someone who's already read Harry Potter and enjoys it they would already get a lot of the mechanisms, really simple uh, uh, deck building game, yep. um, and it scales. So when you start, even in box three, when you start, there's very few rules and you add them game by game. So it's really easy to teach, not overwhelming. And by the time you play game seven, you feel like you're playing a massive battle, but you didn't learn all those rules at once. Mm -hmm. um, and since most people have read or watched Harry Potter, this is an easy one. Oh, I know that. And they feel like they already know some of the game. Yep. So another one, and this has been around a while. And I, I, I mean, Pandemic's not a complicated game with rule sets. But it, there's, there, it can be very intimidating. Forbidden Island, and I think we bought this for 15 bucks on sale, what, many years ago. And its price hasn't gone up. It is one of the tin games that stays in the tin because it's, it's too big for the other ones. This is a co-op, and what you're doing is you're moving around an island that is sinking, trying to collect the treasures and get away. Works really well. Rules are pretty simple. Rule book is really good. So you can get this, play it, plays in 30 minutes. Being a co-op, it really does help work together to figure out the rules. And honestly, this is probably one of the best beginner games out there. Yep, and everyone likes it, everyone understands, I want to get off the, the sinking island. Yep. This is King of Tokyo, this is Yahtzee, really, with monsters, that's how I describe it to anyone. It's Yahtzee with monsters, our kids love it, because you're just throwing, you're attacking each other. Really easy to teach, because most people know Yahtzee rules. Um, and so, um, and the claws, the dice, what each one does is really self-explanatory. Um, the monsters in it are all fun to look at. There's no special rules for each monster, so you don't have a lot of um, asynchronous teaching to do with each character. Everyone plays the same. Um, the only thing that's a little bit is the powers that you can buy that you can more or less even yeah. not play with them if you didn't want to, though that renders the lightning pretty useless. But even that, um, it's really easy to explain. There's only ever three out, and you can explain them as they come up. So really quick and yeah. easy to teach. Um, everyone gets the rules, and who doesn't enjoy throwing dice with monsters? Yeah. Honestly, that one really does work well, and it's it's simple. And it works um, for almost any age level. And it's fun. It's fun. That's one of the things. Now, a lot of people have played dominoes before. What this does is it, quotation mark, gamifies it, where you're trying to get larger areas of set colors, and there's different ways to score. And it it really does flow quite well. 
So you're looking to get a bunch of, of crowns and, and the like, but it looks really cool when you're done and it's just fun. And the it, pieces are really nice quality. Yeah, they're they're chunky. For a really cheap game, the yep. quality is good. Blue Orange is always good about that, but I was surprised at how nice the the pieces were. Of course, I'm sitting here digging it out. Heavy cardboard. It it really is nice. Um, it looks pretty on the table too. When you finish it, you'll be like, "Oh, that's cool." And it's simple rules. Great starter game. We got ours at Target with the with the tower, which helps organize stuff. And I think again, you can find this off and on for for less than twenty bucks. It's really cheap. There's a there's a more ex extensive Queen Domino. We actually owned it and got rid of it. We prefer the simplicity of King Domino. Yeah, I guess if we're going for something more meaty, we're going to go for something more meaty. Yeah. This is another blue orange game. This is New York 1901. And this is really an area control game. You're trying to control blocks and build your cities, but it's really simple. The rules are very straightforward. Um, and everyone understands the idea, but I'm building skyscrapers. And there's the really cool specialty skyscrapers you can build um, that go with, you know, the New York theme. Um, but really easy and quick to play. It's just enjoyable. And again, there's mm -hmm. like four rules. So it's really easy to teach someone, um, even though there's end of game scoring, it's really, oh, hey, you know, this is what you're gonna score at the end. Oh, okay, that's no problem. There's no complicated rules. The rules are easy mm -hmm. to read and setup is easy and quick as well. That one also, there is some thinking, but it's not, the, the rules are easy. It's where you build and how you build that, adds the meat to the game. So I actually think that's a very good starter, but it also can be played quite, you know, experienced players can do well with it too. This is one of our larger games, Ink and Gold. Uh, I can't remember what else it's called. Ink and Gold in the US and-, and Diamond. Diamond. Cause that's yeah. what it comes up in Board Game Geek. So Ink and Gold, you either go farther in or you leave. You have two choices every run. What you're doing is you're going in and trying to get gems. You flip over a card, you get to split the gems with everybody still in there. Monster comes up. First time a monster comes up or a hazard comes up, no big deal. Second time, everybody runs out and loses everything they have in store. So if you stay in, you're pushing your luck. This is a pure push your luck game where you either decide, I want to keep going, try and get more money, or I'm going to leave. Also, any non-evenly split gems stay on the board for the next person who leaves alone. So you, if you see a bunch of stuff laying there, you can leave and bank that stuff. We have had excellent luck. This plays to eight players, and it doesn't take that long, maybe 20 minutes. It's great and a good starter game for push your luck doesn't have dice either so well the nice thing is is a lot of times when you, you've got a group coming over you're kind of waiting for everyone to split up and you're at that weird thing where you don't have enough this is a great game to throw in there and just yep. fills in that time this honestly i've heard that people could play it well over zoom because there's really no components almost to it you just have to keep track of who has how many gems speaking of gems yes this is splendor um the app for splendor is actually really great too but this is really simple. You are collecting um, gems that you are then getting to buy other things that are on the board. And the goal being you're trying to satisfy these requirements that different nobles have out. And it's just really whoever has the most points. When someone hits, I think, 17 points, the game ends. Um, and because you finish the round, you could technically, someone could beat them in that last round. But really straightforward. Um, just, oh, collect these and match them up yep. and try to match the goals of the end. Thing. And the nice thing is the, the pieces, the gems in it are really fun. They're really heavy. We, yeah, the Target Target one, talked. To, we talked about how just amazing those are. And, and there's just something about them. Like, yep. I love the app, but we haven't got rid of this because I just love the pieces. Um, and there's something about having all those pieces in front of you that's really cool, but really quick and easy to teach. Um, you know, there's like three rules, so everyone gets it. And even though there can be a lot of strategy in how you collect stuff and how you go after the nobles, um, so that you can continue playing this even after you've become a little bit more experienced, it's easy for someone who isn't experienced to get in and feel like yeah. they've done well and understand the rules 
without being overwhelmed. But then someone who has played a lot isn't going to feel like there's nothing here for them either. All right, another one that we've run a lot, and this is another game that goes three to six. So it's it's a, a larger player count is for sale. So you it's split into two aspects. The first aspect, you have some money and you're buying cards and the cards are numbered one to 30. And these are homes. So you're gonna spend money to get those cards. The second half of the game, you're gonna have large checks out there where you try and sell someone your home by getting the biggest number out there. So the checks go from zero to 15, I believe. 15. Something like that. And you end up, uh, basically it becomes a trick taking game, the second half. Love this one, played it a lot. And it, it stays in the collection, this one's great. Nice thing is you only have to teach one part at a time. You just tell them, okay, yep. you're trying to get the best houses possible. And then when you get there, okay, now you're going to sell those houses. So you don't, you don't even need to know the second half of the rules to play the first half. And you'll still do well because mm -hmm. there's not any, you know, get the best homes you can. Sell them for the best prices. Um, really straightforward and yep. everyone enjoys it. And the nice thing about it, second part is everyone gets a check. It's just there's zeros out there. So, you, yeah. might, you know, if you're selling the, uh, the, the sewer one, you might not get much. Um, this is Carcassonne, and we had the big box, but we collapsed into this 10. So this is Carcassonne plus all its expansions. And we don't particularly like all the expansions, but we bought them together, so we've got them all here. Um, but Carcassonne is a tile laying game, and you start with one on the board, and you're just matching up road to road, city to city, trying to build the longest roads, the biggest cities, get the most points. Um, really easy. The only complicated part is farms yeah. and you could easily just skip farms the first time you taught someone and you really wouldn't be out that much. Um, I honestly, think it's recommended to do that. Yeah. Honestly, half the time I get to the end and go, Ooh, do I have any farms? And yeah. I have no idea if I have farms or not. And I played it tons of times. Um, so, but the rest of it's really straightforward, easy to teach. And it looks really cool on the board when you're done and you really feel like you built something. So for someone new to the game to see that laid out, um, it's really kind of a cool experience. All right. I tried, we tried to hit a bunch of different themes and, and types of games. This is a race game. It's Downforce. Now, Downforce as a whole is a simple game. You're gonna have a hand of cards. On the cards is the different colored cars. And when you play one card out of your hand, each colored car moves as far as it can up to the number of spots. Now you move them, unless there's a power that says otherwise. The thing is, I have won the game by having my car lose the race. Because the other aspect is, you are going to bet on who you think is gonna win the race. So there's a strategy of you trying to aim to have your cars come into the middle so you get some money for winning, but be able to accurately predict and get the other car to win the race so you get the most money from your bets. We've always had a fun time with this. Everybody's loved it. Goes up to six players, and we found that the six player works really well. It, and it doesn't really add to the time. So this is a really simple rule set. Works really well with new players or people coming into it, but we've always enjoyed it. It plays well for experienced gamers as well. It's just fun. It's almost controlled chaos, but there is a lot of strategy to what you bet and how. Yep. Um, and I'm awful at it, but you still have fun with it. And so, you know, someone can really put a lot of strategy and thought into that and feel like you did something like Camel Cup. There's really almost no control there is more control here you don't feel like it's just as, as random as something like camel cup and the last one this is a really typical one that comes out and he made fun of me for shoehorning two in but cheating. this is ticket to ride this is the base us box you can see we played it so much our box is starting to do but i love ticket to ride yeah. and there's like three rules so it's really easy and everyone understands oh i make trains and build routes um, and so it's really easy and quick. And the thing is, is they've done these small box ones and mm -hmm. these are even easier. Um, and these work really good for kids because they're shorter. Our problem with the full ticket to ride with our kids, and we have a 10 and 12 year old, 
is length, um, especially of our 10 year old who really enjoys it, is the length of the game, not the complexity, but just the length of do it and the length of the roots. Um, he gets set on that I want to go this way if someone cuts him off. These shorter ones are much faster, like 15, 20 minutes. The roots are much shorter. Um, so it's really a quick and easy way to teach someone the game and they get the mechanics mm -hmm. um, and then can move up to this if they have any, you know, especially for younger players. These are great. But even for older players, the nice thing about these small games is they're so quick. You can play two black to back. It's so, oh, okay, I got it. I want to play again. And you can do that. You can play probably two of these in the time you play yeah. one of these. And you get the exact same feel out of them. And there's three of these small ones now. Um, New York, London, and Amsterdam just released. And Amsterdam actually has pretty nice um, expansion to it yeah. with the thought about it. And then, of course, if they end up liking Ticket to Ride, there's so many expansions for it um, that add a lot of weight to it. And I do like my Ticket to Ride. You are definitely a completionist on that. Yes. So these are the games that we recommend people look at when they're starting to get into the hobby. So this is this is the list that we've done it. And um, that's where we're at. So thank you.